words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be as pleasing in your sight, Lord, because you are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. I get so excited. It is indeed one of my best seasons of the church. The day when we begin to prepare the preparations for the coming of Jesus Christ. We begin to, to light the candles, we sing the Advent hymns, and we wait and we prepare. September 11 
brought about another wave of people ready to tell us that the time is here. This has been going on for centuries and will continue, no doubt in my mind, for centuries more. Most of these predictions are about bad things or bad news that will be either coming or happening now. But never about good things. Earthquakes, fires, and torment. How about seeing Christ coming in the clouds? Now that's good news. I would like to see that. You see? But no, you know, famine and, and all these tidal wave and all bad things. Not good things. I'm more with good things. I like good things. But I know bad things happen to good people. You see, there's a book about that that I read one time. <laughs> so, All that is the stuff of good movies effect. But not so good for our Christian faith and our Lutheran theology. Certainly not good biblical study material. The book of Revelation takes great precedence in their work, but the focus is on the bad things, the signs, and not on the good things which John trumpets at the beginning of the book, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We focus on the bad things, but we forget the good things. We focus on the manger that he didn't have a place to stay, but we forget about the birth. Millions have been made on the rapture or the left behind series of books sold in many Christian bookstores. They even have done movies about it. They make much of the last times and trace on fear and anxiety. <clears throat> there may be an exciting read, but certainly not a good biblical read. The author will do well to read today's text from Matthew. We will not know the time to assume that we can to assume that we can is to presume to know more than the Son of God. When I was in Yuma, Arizona, with the Marines, they had this the door, it's this cult over there. And I met with the, I should say, the one of the leaders <laughs> of that cult and he mentioned a specific day that earth is not going to be no more and I bowed down and I said my God my God are you the father and he goes like what are you talking about yeah because scripture tell, tells us that not even the Son will know when the end it is. Only the Father. He said a couple things, but I still <laughs> <laughs> Those are the things that we need to be cautious. Many people will come, as it says in the beginning, but not the ones that we can follow through 
through scripture. To want to know is to stand alongside of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and long for the fruit of the tree that will allow them to know more than God made them to know. <clears throat> the desire to know the end is very much a part of our society. If we know when the end will come, we can do pretty much as we like now, because we know. I was watching a movie, I forgot the title, but the guy was told that he was going to die in two days. So he told his boss certain things, and he quit, and he grabbed all his money, <clears throat> left his wife, and went out to an escapade and blow out all the money and everything else. And then two days passed, he came back to the doctor, and the doctor says, Oh, we switched your record to somebody else. <laughs> It's funny how people like to tell you when is your time, or well, at least give you a spectrum of it. I remember they say to my mother that she didn't have more than one or two months to live because of the cancer that was consuming her so quickly. She lasted almost two years after they say that. See? They don't know. I don't know. Let's celebrate what we have at this moment. If we know the end, then we, may, we can make a final rush preparation and do as we like now. You know, I will go and get an insurance for one million dollars because I know and they don't know. You see, so I get my wife all set up and her kids and everything else and so on and so forth. But retirement funds and pensions are things to prepare us for the future. But what future it is if we're not preparing it with Christ in mind. The problem is we do not know which of us will live to see another sunset. Today's text from Mark Matthew speaks of the ordinaries of this coming of Christ. People will be eating and drinking, getting married, baptizing their children, working in their jobs. Martin Luther is supposed to have said that if he knew the end of the world was coming tomorrow, anybody have you? He will plant an apple tree in the morning. Luther was not given to speculations of the end of times. He focused rather on the purpose of the world which God intends for the present time. He was more in the here and now on the people that were free, on the people that needed to know Christ, to know the good news. What may happen in the future does not excuse you from what God requires of you here and now. If we know the end is near, the temptation is to hold up in a bomb shelter or armed fortress in the mountains and wait. That's what many of this group did. They got this little shack in the desert, which actually I went to see one time. And they have canned food galore, you know, and all these things. And I go like, oh, what is it? It doesn't make sense. If the end is coming, 
why do you need all these kids? <laughs> you know? It doesn't make sense. Their theology. But people are so in need to know that other people take advantage of that. While they were out there spending time waiting, the leaders over there were having a great time with big TVs, expensive cars, and luxury homes. An uncertainty of what will happen, but within a certainty that Jesus Christ is in the midst of it with us. When we stop trying to figure out when, we have energy to listen to what God is calling us to do now, today. Advent preparation is about removing the noise from our lives so that we can hear and see the coming of Jesus <coughs> amongst us today. And Jesus for us does not come only in a manger. Jesus comes to us in a neighbor's care, <coughs> in a neighbor's touch, in the wife caress, in the husband's embrace. I have said this many times, but it's just gives a good example of what I'm saying when I went to visit this young lady suffering in agony and pain that was consuming her body, the illness, and she was cursing at God and cursing at me and so on and so forth and I keep talking to her and I try to move out all this cursing and talking and so on and so forth on to find and I say, there is Jesus. She is a child of God. And Christ is in her. And that's what we need to look in, in everybody. Not on the exterior things that distract us, but looking inside. We are to live in a constant readiness, attentive to Jesus who give us hope for today and for tomorrow. If, they, if this were your last day on earth, how would you spend it? If you aren't, why not? The place of worship is our community and congregation has been very much in my mind this past week. Paul tells us not to neglect being together. As I spend time with those who have lost ones, loved ones, it became so clear to me the extent to which we rehearse our death in our worship. We prepare each time we come together the promises and the hopes that carry us through the difficult times of death. You are the treasure people of God. This is a foretaste of the feast to come. These are just a few things that are in our liturgy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And we share that with each other. As you go out from this place, and so many more things in our liturgy, in our worship. We need to make time for getting together, not only for worship, but to study. <coughs> to study scripture, to study each other, to study life. 
and comment in our own theology what it's all about. To commune together. We need to take our time together seriously, but in hope and joy. Our hope is in the one who comes, who is among us, and who will come again. We are to heighten our awareness of his coming with each other. We are to live in the light of that day even before it appears. Hey, by the way, I was at the grocery store and when I was talking to the clerk, I noticed Yes, Christ with the Share those things. As Paul said today in Romans. Yes, we are to live with uncertainty, but an uncertainty about those things that really do not matter. If our certainty is in the one who is with us and will continue to be with us, which is Jesus Christ, then there is no uncertainty. He is with us. God created the heaven and earth. And that's all we need to know. Remember that? Advent is a time to refocus and regroup. Christ came as a baby and we celebrated. Christ will come again. Of that we are assured. Christ comes into our midst today and that is where the living takes place here Therefore, we begin Advent, preparing for the revelation that is ours and is the full disclosure of Jesus in the joy and the sorrow, the laughter and the tears, the good and the bad, the comedy and the tragedies of our daily life here and now. What is the full disclosure of life itself? Let's get prepared to receive Him once again.